You're listening to That Gets My Goat. So, The Avengers just came out. Now, if you are in Ireland or in the UK, your movie was called Marvel's Avengers Assemble. Any idea why that is, Big? No. Think about it. Why would that be the case? Only in the oh, UK. Oh, or... because of the other Avengers. They were kind of a big deal in the UK, right? That's right. My ticket stub says Marvel's Avengers. Well, right? the copyright at the end of the film does say Marvel's The Avengers. And so my guess is that's the official title. It's like that stupid Disney seen it movie. Disney's The Little Mermaid. Yeah, Disney seen Disney it Pixar's game. Disney Pixar's A Bug's Life. Every card says that. Every answer says Disney's Treasure Planet. And so we always give people crap every time we play that when they say, oh, that one's Treasure Planet. And you go, I'm sorry, the correct answer is Disney's, Disney's Treasure Planet. Yeah, it's one of those. Apparently, next time we get the Marvel Seen It game, it's going to be the same thing. No, I'm sorry. The correct answer was Marvel's The Avengers. And yeah, we ne- we didn't get that with Marvel's Thor. Which is weird because at le- in Norway, maybe they did, though. <laughs> but there was another movie called The Avengers, 1998. True. There was a, a very successful British TV series in the 70s. And so for that reason, they called it Marvel's Avengers Assemble. Anyhow, we've anticipated this movie. I've anticipated this movie like crazy, probably since the end of Iron Man, when you see yeah, when Nick Fury step out and he says, I want to talk to you about the Avengers initiative. You know, we, we've seen all of these Marvel movies leading up to it. And uh, in 2010, there were, the, there were rumors. First, Jon Favreau was going to direct the Avengers and everybody was excited about that because Iron Man was so good. And then... I'd say it was probably March 2010. Suddenly the word started to spread that Joss Whedon was going to direct it. And and I knew it was a lie because <laughs> Joss is always he's he's one of those guys that you'll hear as an also ran. You know, this guy was going to do and then he was fired. Or this guy was he auditioned to do Terminator 5 and they didn't take his pitch or whatever. Right. And I went to the Anaheim Wizard World Convention. And Stan Lee was at a panel and he was just talking about, you know, all these Marvel movies are fabulous. And, and oh, Joss Whedon's going to be great for the Avengers. And, and all of a sudden, everybody in the room started to just, what? did you have a And if you look at like the Wikipedia page, that was the first like official <laughs> word that Joss Whedon was doing. It. They were trying to save it for Comic-Con for July of 2010. They shouldn't have told Stan then. I and guess. at Comic-Con, they made their like official announcement and he came out and presented all the people. And, and that was the official confirmation that Mark Ruffalo is now Bruce Banner instead of Edward Norton and all that. And, and But I have to admit that some of the excitement of that moment of the Comic-Con moment was gone because we knew <laughs> that it was Joss Whedon. But, but we've talked so much, you and I, about why we love Joss Whedon, why he was a great pick for the director, the writer-director. I mean, because that's the thing. Right. You can't just have him direct somebody else's material. He has a certain sensibility, a certain voice, and an attitude that's him. And it works when you... It only works when you say, do your thing. And I, I really feel like they just let him make the movie that he wanted to make. And, and I don't know. We'll, we'll have to ask him sometime. I'm sure he had people, you know, he had Avi Arad and f- folks like that looking over his script and making sure he's not effing everything up. But you can see when something's good. And this was good. And it was, yes. Uh, so from here on out, there's going to be spoilers aplenty. So if you haven't seen it and you have any interest in seeing it, Go ahead. These episodes will be up until October when our final episode airs and there's no more Dune Steve. So you have until then. <laughs> Just go see the movie and then come back and, and, and we'll still be here. Okay, and so I don't know how we're going to break up this conversation. I meant to write down like uh, bullet points mm-hmm. and each episode was going to be covering one thing, but I didn't do it. Big and I saw the movie together. We saw it on on Friday night. Sold out. Uh, no, it wasn't sold out. It wasn't? No, there's that one handicapped chair next to you that nobody ever filled. Oh, okay. So it was at least one seat short. Seriously, of nobody out. sat in that? You would know it was next to you. 
Well, no, because I went two days later. I took my niece and we sat in those exact same seats and two people did come and sit right there. So I, I'm huh. confusing the two experiences. One thing that was weird, though, is the sound on the screening you and I went to was so much better than the one I went to two days later. Huh. There were lines that were lost. In fact, there was a moment when the two people next to me said, what did he say? And I had to tell them from remembering from two <laughs> nights before huh. just because it was one of those theaters where all the speakers were just behind the screen. And when you and I saw it, I guess it must have been surround sound. It was 7.1 Dolby was it Digital really? surround 7. sound 1? where available. Yeah, we did yeah. see that in the credits. Though. I did. Apparently it's possible to have 7.1. So we're probably going to talk about this in depth. And, and so, you know, spoiler warning is over. Yeah, um, there will be spoilers. And there is things to be spoiled. So uh, if you think that you'll see it, then just wait. These MP3s will be available. They'll be they'll be around long after we're dead. That archive.org will have them stored away for us for eternity, probably. So. Wait, what is, what is archive.org? That's where I uh, dump our files for That Gets My Goat. But the actual Dune Steve episodes aren't in archive.org? They're not, but they will be eventually. Wow. There, will, there will come a day when I do that. And there came a day. That's how the Avengers would always begin. Oh, yeah. There came a day like no other. Oh, okay. So let me set up where I stand and then we'll talk about where you stand. I was never a fan of the Avengers growing up. I was a Marvel kid. I loved Marvel, but basically Spider-Man was my guy. And a little bit Hulk, because there was the Bill Bixby show right. when I was a boy, and my dad and I would watch that together. But as far as comic books went, once I was old enough to buy comics, it was always Spider-Man, and then later the X-Men. And I never really embraced the Avengers. My first taste of the Avengers was when the series was rebooted as the new Avengers, and Spider-Man joined the team. And I, I remember I was at the comic book store and, and everybody was talking about this new Avengers thing. And the art was magnificent. It was David Finch. And I leafed through it and I saw Spider-Man interacting with Captain America and Iron Man. And, and, and They put Wolverine on that team too, didn't they? I think he was on the cover, but I don't think he showed up for a couple of issues. But yes, eventually. And that was their ideas. They saw what Justice League did at DC where they had their marquee characters in the Justice League. And Avengers had been pretty much the same characters since the beginning, since the Stan and Jack days. Uh, and they would have a rotating roster, but we didn't get the characters that were popular in their own series. And so they thought, <clears throat> well, let's try it. Let's bring Wolverine and Daredevil and Spider-Man. Daredevil turned down the invitation. Yeah, Daredevil is right. only on the f first cover, I think. Well, anyhow, they, they, yeah, they put a lot of them in. They said, let's let's just try. And I love Spider-Man, but I I hadn't seen him really interact in a team in this way. And so I bought it and I was hooked and I, I bought that series and, and really, really loved it. And then because I so enjoyed Captain America's stuff and I, I, I enjoyed the things that they would refer to, they would talk about something that had happened with the Scarlet Witch and stuff. And I, and I was like, OK, well, let me go read those stories. And that's what comic books were so good at when I first got into them. And I don't know if that went away, but clearly it still exists in the 21st century because it happened again. They refer to things that you don't know about. And so you go out and seek those books. And that's how I became a fan of the Avengers. Eventually, I started to love Captain America as though I had been a fan my whole life of Captain America. And, you know, then we started getting all these Marvel movies. And even though I was never a fan of Iron Man, I was there opening day and could pretend that I was. And now, you know, I am a fan of Iron Man. It's it's funny that way. So, so tell me where you stand. I'm the same way. I didn't I'm less of a comics person than you are. Uh, I didn't read them growing up at all. I know comics from cartoons. I saw Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I saw the Spider-Man, those really old ones where the theme song that everybody knows comes from. Probably the comic book characters that I liked the most were probably the X-Men, which came from this cartoon series they did, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. And you watched that, the, the animated Yeah, series. I watched a fair amount of it. And I saw it would come on on Saturdays and I would watch it. And yeah, they had the Sentinels and all those kind of things in there. And that was when I was first introduced to most of that stuff. And then their movies came out and that kind of pulled me into being interested in comic books at all. And then back when you first moved back out here and we worked together at the same place, you started telling me about the new Avengers. 
you talked about the stories and stuff that happened to him enough that I was finally like, oh, and I think at the first Comic-Con that we went to, I found a couple of trades of that and I bought them along with Joss Whedon's X-Men run as well. Yeah, I started to get into it that way. That's what I know the Avengers from as well. And I got into it enough and you told me probably all the stories before I actually bought the comic books and then read them to see how they really went instead of in your crazed, disjointed way. But I do tend to (laughs) channel the stories through my own interpretation and yeah oftentimes it doesn't quite match up with what happened in the but yeah i started in with the new avengers and kept going through those until eventually we got to the civil war and there became the new avengers and the secret avengers right Isn't no, there that were what the mighty avengers and i think the new avengers became the secret avengers yeah and they had all sorts of different stuff going on and i stuck with it for for quite a while i kind of let it fall away i haven't kept up with it it might be interesting to go back i think the last one that i got was a mighty avengers trade where they were trying to train up a bunch of other avengers so they had like an avengers team for every state and so forth and right you lent that to me it was really good it was called uh, avengers initiative yeah and I think I, I meant to follow up on that and buy the next trade, and I, I never did. Okay, I'm sure you could still get it. I've stopped collecting comic books completely, and you know why, but I'll just get it out there. It's something called One More Day. <laughs> um, it was a Spider-Man storyline. I, I, I would assume there are other people like this. It bothered me, and I stopped reading. But yeah, I still have a great love for comics and for these characters, And I I can't remember what conversation we were having, but I was saying, you know, that there hasn't been a movie of these characters that was as good as the comic books were. Mm -hmm. But I, geez, Avengers comes close. It really captures the team dynamic and the interaction and the fun of this sort of thing. And uh, we talked about it in the last episode being worried. Well, I was worried. I don't know if you were worried, but I was worried because I expected this thing to be great. And we had heard too because they'd shown it, they'd previewed it, they they opened it a week early everywhere but here, and people were saying it was, oh, it was awesome. And so, boy, trying to keep my expectations <laughs> low. What was the song? Oh, was Lowered that? Expectations. I don't know if I even ever sang it right. It was just... Lowered Expectations. But it went with the cheesy dating service for people who are now old and fat. And now they're, they're, they're not looking for somebody good looking. They're just looking for somebody, anybody, really. You were going to say something. That just, do you want? Oh, to I was just going to say, yeah, one of the drawbacks always between comic books and movies. And it's like we've talked about the reason why something like Game of Thrones is so cool is because it just they can tell the whole story in a comic book it comes out every month. They just keep going and keep going and keep going. And so they can tell the whole story, whereas a movie, it's two hours and 48 minutes long, and that's it. Wait, was Avengers two hours and 48 minutes long? I think that's what it said, when, one of the things I was looking through here. I wow. I remember where I saw that. but Well, we're probably going to go all over the place with this conversation, but somebody somewhere must have had an extraordinary amount of faith in Joss Whedon to make a two-hour, and was it really 235? To make that long 248 of a is what I said, so I don't know where you got the 35 from. Oh, we'll click on it. Let me <laughs> see so we'll know. Two hours 22, it says oh, there. Oh, 222. Okay, so we were both like way up in the dark. But to just give him that kind of canvas to paint on and say, I, and you know what? Maybe it was cut down. Maybe it was three hours and we've got a half hour of deleted scenes That'd out there. It's more of them sitting there eating more shawam. What was that stuff called? Shawam? I want to say shawamu. Shawamzi? Shawamer? Something like that. Yeah, my friend at work was saying, oh yeah, that's what they're having. I was like, oh, that's what that was. I thought that was like some kind of exercise thing like Pilates or something, (laughs) what he was talking about before. I thought he was still messing with Banner when he talked about the sh... whatever it was. But yeah, it cracked me up. Another half hour of them just sitting there chewing without speaking. (laughs) I haven't seen the script. It probably is out there. I don't know. I mean, on the internet, you can find a lot of stuff. Yeah. Most of it's porn, though. My guess is that Joss produced a really, really good script. And the powers that be were enamored with it enough to say, okay, go do this. I don't know. It's so hard because movies get made for different reasons. Right. And we've seen just like when John Carter didn't perform, you know, they want to lay the blame on somebody, you know, who's at fault. 
But when something succeeds, everybody wants to step forward and say, oh, that was me. Right. I did that. I greenlit that. And so funny thing what, is, what's the same? Avengers and John Carter came from the same company. They is the guy didn't. who greenlit John Carter all now getting lauded for also greenlighting Avengers? I don't think they had anything to do with each other. Uh, Disney didn't make Avengers. Right. But Disney's the company in charge. They own Marvel. Well, they do now. But Paramount had more to do with Avengers than Disney did. And they got their name on. They got their uh, Paramount logo gets, on gets the like eight percent of of the gross. Oh yeah, and Disney gets to market the hell out of it, and or not, you know what I mean, merchandise it right. and all that stuff because their contract was for X number of films, and Captain America and Avengers were the last two, and Disney said no, we want to do Avengers, and so they bought out bought their out. contract, but it's just so that they could reap all the rewards once the movie was done. Marvel We've, Studios is its own studio. It it has its own financial backing and they're simply distributed by Paramount or in this case Disney. Buena Vista. Right. But from now on, from Avengers on, it's all going to be Buena Vista distributed. In fact, I think Hulk was distributed by Universal, even though it was still the same guys that made Iron Man. Anyway, I don't know why we're talking about this. The movie is just a few days old for us, and there was talk on Friday. You know, it's like, wow, there were a bunch of midnight screenings. You know, people were saying this is going to be a hundred and fifty million dollar weekend. This is going, this could be a hundred and sixty dollar weekend. By the time I came back from the movie, they were saying it's going to be a hundred and seventy five million dollar weekend, and and that was kind of amazing. And the next day, or I guess it was on Sunday, they were saying this is a new record: two hundred point three million. It's the biggest opening ever. It passed Harry Potter 8's 169. And then Monday, which is today, they're like, even more people went to see it on Sunday. It's at 207 is what it did. And so that is an awesome record that will stand for two months until Dark Knight comes out. <laughs> and so... <laughs> and that one will stand until next summer. Well, I, yeah, I guess. I, I, <laughs> That's the way the stupid records work. Since they charge, I mean, sure, next next time they'll all be paying for D box seats, which are seventeen dollars a piece. And I'm sure in some place like New York, those D box seats are forty five dollars a piece. So that's true. Yeah, there were these. Um, what did they call like the best of the best? Not deluxe theaters, but something theaters. Premiere. Yeah, I don't know. The fill in the blank. You know the word. There are a couple of those in Hollywood. And, you know, it's like 12 or $14. Or it was when I lived there. Now it's probably way up. But you pay for really nice seats, for really nice service. You pay for ushers that will throw people out if they're texting or, or crying babies or whatever. I mean, there were rules where no one under three will be admitted to these, you know, these screenings. And, and, and you would pay extra for that privilege because it was for people that really loved movies mm -hmm. and chances are if you really loved movies you're there in la because uh, you want to be a part of it anyhow uh the biggest opening ever it's possible that hobbit in oh, november will record. eclipse batman After i i don't know <laughs> it, but these numbers start to not mean anything and, and we've complained about that before i don't care that it's the biggest opening of all time as much as I care how good the movie was. Right. They have that cinema score thing where they ask people after they've paid to see it and they've sat through the movie, give it a letter grade. And I, I told you that Devil Inside got an F. <laughs> um, do you know what Avengers got? Didn't you say that it got an A plus? It got an A plus. Yeah, I didn't think I told you that. But I didn't even know you could get an A plus for these movies. I had heard A's before and I'm like, cool. Um, so I, I think... Uh, a big percentage of the audience loved it. Yeah, they went away satisfied and will likely be back. You know what's interesting about the whole gross? Already, as of, what, four days ago that it opened? Okay. Marvel's Avengers has made more money than the entire run of the film Thor, than the entire run of the film Captain America, the first Avenger, and then the entire run of the film The Incredible Hulk. So apparently putting them together really means something. Well, that's crazy because a year ago when we were talking about Thor and Captain America, we talked about that, that people's expectations are through the roof for this Avengers movie. They're acting like it's going to make what these movies individually made put together. I was like, they're crazy if they expect that. <laughs> but that appears to be going on. Yeah, it's likely will happen. They said that 
the opening weekend was bigger than Captain America, Thor, and Incredible Hulk opening weekends put together oh yeah i totally believe that it might even have been including iron man one iron man two opened really really big yeah i that's those are the only two that it hasn't already beaten after just four days is the iron man films both of those made over 300 million so it's uh got a little bit to go to beat those two out but yeah it's already beaten bull all three of the other characters that have had films before i think that's kind of funny now why why did it open so huge I don't know. Maybe it's just the idea of it all. It is unique in movies. Yeah, huh? you and I were talking about that before. It's the first time you've ever had three separate films. It's a sequel to four films all at once. These films all have their own sequels, but we're pulling it together too, and it doesn't happen. I can't. There, we we couldn't think of a single example of that ever happening before. Which I think it was brilliant of them to have done that to have these characters have their own movies and then bring them all together in, in a separate one. We'd heard t stories of like, oh, there's going to be a Justice League movie coming soon. And they were going to cast somebody other than Brandon Ralph as the as Superman. Superman. Yeah. And we're just like, why would they do that? You know, what, but, what is uh, the their, their reasoning was that they wanted it to be a separate franchise right. than the Christian Bale Batman movies. Right. And and yeah, I, there were a lot of people that would just scratch their heads about that. But I think those were the people that knew and loved these characters and right. knew that Superman and Batman knew each other anyway. That movie died partly because of the writer's strike, partly because regimes changed at Warner Brothers. But it came so bloody close to happening. I mean, they really? they made the costumes. Weta made the costumes for Justice oh, League. Wow. And it was all cast and it had a start date and a script and a director and it didn't happen. And had it happened, who knows? It might have generated this kind of publicity. There's like, yeah. wow, Superman and Batman fighting side by side. I, wow, you know, and Wonder Woman. And, and these other guys, we don't know. But the brilliance of the way Marvel did it. And Guy Gardner. Was that there were millions of people who didn't know who Thor was. Or millions of people who only knew Captain America as an abstract. Mm -hmm. but millions of people who didn't even know who Iron Man was. Right. And then by the time Avengers came out, they knew who all these characters were. They knew the actors. They knew their origins. They knew their powers and all that stuff. So much work had been done before the movie even began. So much heavy lifting had been done before Joss Whedon's movie even began. And that's something that has never been done before either. Right. I, I, maybe if you're making a book that people have read for you know 10 years and loved – you're making Scarlet or something like that, the sequel to Gone with the Wind. But even so, it was 40 years after Gone with the Wind that they made that. These things, cynical reviewers and, and critics on that were saying that those first five Marvel movies were all just extended previews for the <laughs> Avengers. And, you know, in a way... That's fair. That's that, that's a, that's I a, guess. I, They're part of the franchise, I guess you could say. Like on Box Office Mojo, they have a tab you can go to that has franchises but you know has all the films grouped together and they have an avengers franchise which has iron man thor etc all grouped in the incredible hulk but not hulk apparently. no and and, that and that's something count. we can talk about in the next episode let's quit for this we just talked about its performance or whatever we'll get into what we liked or didn't like uh, next time okay okay bye see you in a bit is that okay or should we have quit way earlier than that's that? fine that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. Okay, so should let's, we start? Let's do a start. start and then use all that crap that we've talked so far, or should we? I probably would put that as outtakes. But oh, so that's all going to be outtakes? Unless you think that that's we should. It's a long outtake. It's like five minutes at least that we've been talking. Well, I. You yelling at your kids can be one outtake. <laughs> I guess you do have four or five shows you're going to stretch this out into. <laughs> we'll see. And, and, you know, I was ambitious yesterday. Before I saw the movie again, I thought, okay, well, I'm going to write up like four different topics that we're going to talk about. And that way we'll say, okay, this is four episodes talking about the Avengers. And when we finish talking about that topic, which was, you know, just like all the characters having something to do uh, that would be the end of that episode and we'd go on to the next one but we'll see we'll just wing it and see what happens okay